can you etch glass on a CO2 laser? Well, of course you can. A lot, a lot of people do it. Can you etch tempered glass on a CO2 laser? That question was asked, and I thought, well, never tried it. Not a tempered glass anyway, so you can get these uh, little tempered glass cutting boards like this here at Dollar Tree, a buck and a quarter. Got little feet on you have to take off to do your engraving unless you're going to engrave inside that and you can leave the feet on. Uh, one thing you do want to do though if you're going to use this for any type of food or anything is put the etching on the bottom so that the top remains just flat smooth glass. Don't uh, etch on top and then try to use that as a cutting board. You'll, just not a good idea. Uh, comes in clear and they also come textured. Uh, the clear gives you a little bit better picture and I'll give you an example here of uh, one I did yesterday. You can see this good. A spider on a spider web there. So, a few things you got to keep in mind. If you have been etching glass, and I say etch because you're not engraving, you're etching it. If you've etched glass on your laser before, and here again I'm talking CO2 laser, not dial laser. That's a whole different ball game and actually doesn't work as well. So one thing you got to make sure of when you're getting your settings, and I'm going to give you the settings here I'm using uh, with a Monport K40, it's a 40 watt CO2 laser. I'll give you all the settings here when, once we get on the computer and I'll show you how I set this up. Because if, you, if your speed is too slow, or if your power is too high, you'll end up with what I call redneck diamonds. And uh, one thing with tempered glass, when it breaks inside the laser enclosure, doesn't just like turn into some little uh, the redneck diamonds it literally blows up so you'll have glass everywhere and it makes a mess so you definitely need to keep your speed high your power low but you still want to get a good grade uh, I should say etch and I did do some tests this is on uh, one of the round textured ones I did several tests there using some different methods now we're going to talk about the different methods you can do it without anything on the glass, just bare glass. Won't make it clean. This one was done just on bare glass. No uh, top end coating, no Dawn dish soap, no water, no tissue, no nothing. So another way to do it is you would use some Dawn dish soap. You would coat your glass. If you're using a textured one, make sure you do it on the smooth side. You would Coat your glass with the soap, then using either some uh, halfway decent tissue paper, or as I use is these uh, Dollar Tree paper towels, because they don't have any additives in it or anything, and they work perfect for this. You would put that over the soap, and then work it in so that the entire surface is saturated with the soap, then do your engraving from there. So what's the advantage of that? Well you'll get a little bit crisper edge on your etch and it, the uh, the soap and the towel and the moisture there kinda helps to keep it cool uh, keep it from going boom inside your laser but there again if you have your speed set correctly and that shouldn't happen the other method is to use instead of using the Dawn dish soap use what they call rapid tack we use this a lot of this around here uh, a lot of our sublimation projects and uh, vinyl and applying vinyl and it, it gets used for a lot of things. You can use that or you can actually use, just use water. Uh, you'll get the same type of effect. However, if you're doing a long engrave, etch rather, I keep saying engrave, you're doing a long etch and it's going to take, you know, maybe like an hour to do your entire project, that paper will probably dry out if you're using water. A rapid tack tends to uh, last a little longer the Dawn dish soap will last the longest and that's the dish soap not diluted just right out of the bottle so there's uh, three different ways to do it again I'm going to do it here just on the bare glass there's a few things you got to keep in mind is that glass needs to be clean I mean impeccably clean on both sides so you want to make sure it's absolutely clean you want to make sure the bed of your laser has nothing no little particles or granules or things laying on it that would uh, could affect the uh, how level the glass is. I mean, if you got one side it got up too close, it would overheat. You go boom, 
and we'd be cleaning up redneck diamonds. So I'll go on the computer here and we'll show you how I get this all set up. Okay, we're going to start out here. Well, where did I get the graphic I'm using? And I will show you. So I am a member here of designbundles.net. This is not sponsored by any means. I, I pay for this every month. Well, they have a little thing called Illustrate AI. So I'm click on that here and you can start creating. You need to be a, a member to use this. So here are the uh, a few of my designs here. So how do you come up with these? Well, over here, I'm just going to give you a quick overview on how to use this. Uh, you'll see up here I'm looking for spider and web Halloween. Maybe I'll put try spooky spider. So let's try this. Oh, and for art style, I want to use a coloring book. That gives me a black and white image there. Let's click on create. So here are a couple of uh, designs I could use if I desired. And to uh, use one of those, you would just click on download. This is right here is the one we're using for this project. That gives you an idea on how you can use that. And I may uh, download those later for something. Okay, now I'll show you what to do once you get this into uh, Lightburn. So here we are in Lightburn. I'm using the Monport 40 watt CO2 laser. And I am not connected to it right now. I'm on a, a remote station here, but I want to show you how to uh, manipulate the image and bring it in and etc. So I need to bring my image in right here. So here are my designs up here. And we are using this one right here. Oh, I guess I could use a different one. Just for fun. Let's bring this one in. So this is obviously too big. Um, I've got this set for inches. I'm working in inches here. Uh, the glass cutting boards you get from Dollar Tree are 7 and 3 quarter inch square. So I'm going to change this to uh, 7.5. That will fit it within the uh, workspace in there. So now, what we have here is a PNG image. And that's not how I want to engrave this. I want to engrave it uh, as, as a fill. So what I'll do is I'll right click on this. we down here to trace image. And this is a trace. Just to show you what it's going to look like. And you can change the threshold and do a lot of other things there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to delete the original image after the trace which is what I always do because I don't need it. So I'll just click on that. Now here's my image and I'm going to use fill for that. So there's our image. So speed and settings. 250 millimeters per second. That's per second not per minute. If you try it per minute you're going to have redneck diamonds everywhere. 25% power, one pass. And that's how we set that up. I'll get into uh, how to prep the glass and everything. And now to prep the glass, after you take the, uh, the plastic off of it, you'll find there's four little rubber feet on there. An X-Acto knife, if you get under the edge of it, they pop up. 99% of the time, all the adhesive will come off and stay on the foot. So I have a sheet here that I, I keep those on. I can put them back on. Or again, get under the edge there and pop it up and it'll take 99% of that adhesive with it, if not 100%. If you should get it where it leaves some adhesive behind, um, isopropyl alcohol will take that off. So, just like that. Now, this still needs to be cleaned. It, it did leave little spots, and there's fingerprints on it, and so on from the manufacturing. You also want to inspect it and make sure there's no defects in it. So, tempered glass can be a little fussy when you're starting the etch on it. It's got a defect in it, and that goes over there, or you're going to end up with redneck diamonds.
Okay, so while that's engraving, we'll talk about what you need to do after the engrave. Post engrave, I, I should say post etch. Keep wanting to say engrave, but we're etching, not engraving. Uh, one of the things you're going to kind of be tempted to do is you're going to pull it off and you're going to say, oh, hell, that was cool. I wonder what that feels like. Don't do that. There are little microscopic pieces of glass there and you'll end up with them in your fingers. So the best thing to do is take it to the kitchen sink or bathroom sink, bathtub, take it in the shower with you if you want, whatever. Use one of these little scrubby sponges. You can get these at Dollar Tree and get them at the grocery store. You get them at Walmart. You can get them everywhere. Uh, it's got kind of a, a little bit of a soft scotch brine on one side, scrubbing pans and so on. Get that under running water, get this wet, and just run this over this repeatedly, going round and round in every direction. That gets rid of any of the little glass particles that might be on there. Otherwise, you'll end up with them in your fingers. So, that's all the uh, post operation you need to do. Then just dry it off and figure out what you're going to do with it. You can put the feet back on if you wanted to and set it back down and make it back into a cutting board or a trivet or just a decoration. Okay, so as you can see, we're finished. We'll pop the lid open here. And you still want to handle this by the edges and don't touch that edge side because there's little microscopic glass shards as I mentioned before. They're there to kind of give you an idea of it. Take this in the other room here and get her all cleaned up. I want to try to show this here. This is on uh, some of the textured glass that uh, you can also get. And it depends on your Dollar Tree whether you can get the clear or whether it'll have this texture on it. Uh, this was again was uh, etched from the back side. So the textured side is up here. And I've got a couple different, this was a, a test piece. So the piece up here, or my name up here, was done with nothing on the glass, just bare glass. And the one right below it was done with exactly the same settings, but using uh, wrap attack and a paper towel. So the, di the only difference really is that the edges of the lines are a little crisper and smoother here than they are up here. But otherwise, there's really no difference. This uh, just kind of give you an idea what it would look like if you were doing it on the texture glass. So yeah, you can still see through it. You can still see your graphics. Just again, make sure you do that on the smooth side, not on the texture side. So got it all cleaned up there and dried off, and I uh, still got some fingerprints on it, but kind of give you an idea there. Now, what do you do with these? Well, you could backlight it. You could put uh, maybe a vinyl coating in the back. You could put feet back on it. Use it as a uh, trivet or cutting board, either one. Just make sure you put the feet on the edge side and not the other side. And again, this will also work with the textured glass ones. It just looks a little bit different. And I'll bring the other one up here so you kind of see. So there's both of them. Simple to make, inexpensive uh, if you're just getting started. Uh, you're looking for some easy projects to do with your CO2 laser. Again, this procedure is not for a diode laser, it's for a CO2 laser. Uh, in particular here is a Monport 40 watt, which I normally only use to make acrylic unicorns out of, but now I thought I'd, uh, in response to a viewer question, you know, can you etch tempered glass on with a CO2 laser? Well, yes you can, but as I mentioned at the beginning, don't get your speed too slow or your uh, power too high, or you'll end up with those going boom inside and you'll end up with all the little redneck diamonds. So you can use these settings here if you like, and something else I'll do is uh, for these graphics, I will put a link in the description of where you can go on our website and you can download those, those for free. They will be light burn files, and they will, of course, are set up for the uh, Montport 40 watt. If you have a different CO2 laser, you can adjust accordingly. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up, always helps the channel. Roger, in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.